<laughs> hindi, hindi nga maganda. Gusto ko yung dye beautiful eh. Good morning, Malacanang Press Corps. Welcome sa press briefing ni Presidential Spokesperson Ernesto Abelga. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Merry Christmas. We'd like to welcome you back after the 25th. This morning we have, the, we have a guest who will be speaking specifically uh, uh, addressing the preparations for the new year. Okay. Uh, his name is Dr. Gerardo Bayugo. He's a dedicated public servant committed to improving the health situation. He's been with the service for 32 years. All right. He's an alumnus of the U University of the East, Ramon Magsaysay Memorial Medical Center, where he attained his medical degree. He went on to acquire a master's degree in public health from the University of the Philippines College of Public Health. As the Undersecretary of Health, he has devoted himself to the mission of attaining all health towards health for all all for health towards health for all Filipinos. Ladies and gentlemen of the Malacanang Press Corps, please welcome uh, Secretary Gerardo Bayugo. You say. Maraming salamat po, Secretary Ernesto Abella, and uh, Merry Christmas po sa lahat uh, to the Malacanang Press Corps, and uh, sana po iligtas yung ating bagong taon. In behalf of Secretary Obial, our Secretary of Health, um, allow me to please uh, read the press release that uh, we have prepared for our December uh, activities. Actually, December 1 is the World AIDS Day, so allow me to uh, read to you the press statement that was prepared uh, for the Secretary, which was uh, also given to our DOH media friends last December 1. Uh, the Department of Health commem commemorates the World AIDS Day uh, with the theme of promoting unity to stop HIV in the Philippines. According to the Secretary, we can stop HIV transmission only through a collective societal effort, focusing on widespread HIV awareness among the youth and the vulnerable populations, relentlessly promoting consistent and correct condom use, establishing test and treat service delivery networks nationwide, and ending stigmatization and discrimination in workplaces. We need to foster real collaboration with other government agencies, such as the Department of Education, as well as community-based organization, in order to reach the young key population with the correct information on HIV and its consequences and how to stop its transmission and spread. From January 1984 to October 2016, a total of 38,114 cases of HIV were reported in the country. In 26, uh, 2016, roughly 26 new HIV infections every day are being reported, or a total of 7,700 56 HIV cases alone for 2016. Uh, compare this to the year 2008 where we have only one case a day, uh, or one infection per day being reported. Most were reported from, the, from January 2011 onward, or about 32,000 cases were reported from January 2011 up to October 2016. And based on the current information, at least 1,912 uh, Filipinos have died because of a, uh, acquired immune deficiency uh, syndrome or AIDS. And currently, there are 16,637 people who are living with HIV uh, uh, that are on antiretroviral treatment. This is a lifelong uh, treatment. And uh, we give this, the government give this free to all those who have registered in our HIV treatment hubs, now conveniently located in uh, nationwide. There are, we have 26 treatment hubs nationwide. More than half of all cases, or 19,000 uh, plus, belong to the 25 to 34 years old age group, 
while 10,279 are among the youth 15 to 24 years old. The predominant mode of transmission from 1984 to 2007 was unprotected heterosexual, meaning boy and girl. Uh, after 2009, male-to-male -male unprotected sex became the predominant mode of transmission. And in 2010, HIV transmission through need sharing of infected needles started to increase. Because of this, spreading of HIV now remains a potential threat to female partners of infected male injecting drug users and also the mother-to-child transmission. On the distribution of uh, condom, uh, this is part of our uh, press release last December 5, and uh, we have to deal with HIV AIDS, not as business as usual, but uh, business unusual using this strategy of eliminating HIV in the country. So the Department of Health, to talk, together with the Department of Education, the National Youth Commission, uh, place the youth as the key player in the campaign against the spread of HIV AIDS. Uh, the, we, uh, the Secretary uh, is proposing the distribution of condoms to schools based on the current statistics in which HIV is increasing among the 15 to 24 years old. Uh, and it is shown that there is low condom use rate and uh, a lot of valid reason or uh, varying reason for not using condom. It includes uh, lack of knowledge about the disease, uh, lack of access to condom, and some legal uh, uh, hurdles since uh, 15 to 17 year old uh, people or children needs uh, parental consent before they can seek uh, uh, services in our uh, social hygiene clinic or avail of reproductive health services. Uh, but uh, the Secretary is uh, convinced that this will help a lot in uh, averting and even uh, reversing the increasing trend of HIV in the country. Uh, we hope to start distribution of condom next year uh, with the uh, cooperation of the Department of Education, specifically in regions with the most number of HIV cases, and these are in National Capital Region, Calabarzon, uh, and Region 3, and in other vulnerable areas and high-risk population groups. Uh, for a statement, the DOH would like to uh, say that the promotion of condoms does not encourage risky behaviors. Rather, it promotes responsibility, respect, and good health habit. habit. Let us equip the youth with the correct and consistent information against HIV and AIDS. So that, that somewhat uh, uh, summarizes our uh, statement on the HIV, including the, the much talk about condom distribution in school. Um, can I? Uh, allow me to just give an update uh, on our uh, IWAS uh, Paputo campaign. We now have uh, 70 firework uh, related injuries uh, reported. This is uh, much, much lower than the figures that we had uh, last year and even the uh, last five years average. In uh, 2015, as of this date, the same period last year, we had 124 cases. But as of today, we have received report that we only have 70 fireworks uh, injury related uh, disease uh, reports, incidents. Um, one is uh, considered a 
fireworks uh, ingestion, but this is not really uh, a case of ingestion. A child uh, was seen to have the loses in between uh, the teeth, but uh, when he was brought to the hospital and was observed, was sent uh, right away, uh, seeing no sign of poisoning or actual ingestion. The, the rest of the 69 are all blast injuries, and uh, half of these are from national capital region. And uh, of these blast injuries, uh, more than half are caused, or 64%, uh, 64 cases are caused by uh, illegal, illegal uh, fireworks, like the piccolo and the boga. There's no report of stray bullet injury, and uh, one report of amputation. This happened in uh, uh, summer, um, and uh, it involves the right uh, four digits of the right uh, hand. Uh, it, there was amputation that was done, but uh, so far no deaths were reported, and uh, we hope to see less and less cases. Uh, we're praying that we'll see less cases and uh, no more deaths, no more injuries, uh, no more amputation, so that everybody will be having a uh, really prosperous and happy new year. So with that, uh, thank you. Wala kayo yung press score questions? Atina Mendez, Philippine Star. Microphone, wait, Atina, thank you. Uh, good morning, Yusek. May we know how much is the budget allocated uh, for the distribution of condoms uh, in 2017? I cannot specifically uh, give the, but the, the budget that we have for the whole HIV/AIDS program, this includes the condom, the testing, uh, is one billion for 2017. Um, we have not procured the condom for distribution because we still have a lot of condom in our stocks. But uh, depending on the success of this uh, campaign, uh, since it will not be nationwide initially, it will be uh, uh, prioritized to some uh, high-risk region. Uh, we have seen that the stocks of condom that we have will be sufficient for us uh, to to make this initial pilot uh, if there will be a need for us to buy more than we have the funds coming the, from that the one billion uh, money uh, allotted for the program but sir, uh, sir uh, you you still have uh, other budget regarding distribution of condom regarding population control yes we still have that uh, have uh, the available uh, for the condom I think uh, 50 million or uh, 50 to 100 million worth of uh, condom is scheduled for procurement for next year. S sir, last question. At this point, how many condoms are in stock at the DOH? And why was this, why are these not distributed? Um, we have uh, actually uh, this regularly on stock, but we have also uh, the, the supplies available in the different at the regions we have, we have at the provincial office, we have at the uh, the different health outlets. So it's there. Uh, the only thing that we have still on stock about 10 million, 10 million uh, condoms uh, at the central office, and this so we can use to test uh, whether this scheme of distribution of <coughs> condom among school uh, high school students will be uh, acceptable and will be successful. Sir, yes, last follow up. Why were these not distributed? 10 million condoms would have an impact maybe sa population this in 2016. We have During to have the budget yeah. in 2016 and you have another budget in 2017, why were these not distributed when there were enough? We have to have stocks somewhere in the central office. And uh, if there's a need to move these stocks in areas where they are uh, reported uh, uh, they are running out stocks, then we have uh, a way of to ad uh, adjusting and supplying them. Uh, so some sort of an elbow room in terms of the distribution or allocation that we have prepared. So, uh, but we, uh, what I'm telling is that we have stocks at the regions, 
and uh, we have stocks available also in the in the health centers in our health facilities so uh, we don't have to be zero at our uh, warehouse in the central office so that's what I'm telling that we have available stocks also but it doesn't mean that we they are not being used they are ready but ready to be mobilized uh, in case there will be our, uh, rural health units or health centers that will be requesting additional supplies. And we have this hotline. It's um, uh, being managed by the Population Commission, wherein our health centers are uh, reporting uh, stocks <coughs> of their family planning commodities. This includes pills, this includes IUD, this includes uh, condom. And uh, we are constantly, uh, regularly receiving calls and following up status of the supplies in their facilities. Chona, you? Sir, uh, yung pamimigay, pagbukas po ng klase sa January at lahat po ng high school students sa NCR, Region 3 and Calabarzon? These details are still being discussed with DepEd because we do not want na basta mamigay lang uh, left and right, it needs to be uh, uh, with appropriate advocacy and information. Hindi ito yung parang kukuha ka lang sa kios at bibili ka. And there should be parental involvement also. So these guidelines are being ironed out with the DepEd so that uh, alam naman natin ang kultura natin um, na madaming uh, against that. But this is one strategy, condom distribution is one strategy that uh, our secretary and the DOH has considered because of the increasing um, cases among the youth. Uh, two out of three infections that's happening now is among the age uh, 15 to 24 years old. So sa kanila, yung infection na dumadami. And uh, that is where we need to do some action. Sir, both public and private schools. Uh, we hope we can do, do that. Uh, uh, may involve pati yung private. Uh, eh, but first, we would like to focus in areas that are, uh, uh, we have seen some many cases, and also those uh, vulnerable uh, individuals. Um, yung mga MSM, kasi yung number one natin ngayon, uh, from 44%, before 2010, now it's 81% as the cause of uh, HIV transmission, it's 81% uh, due to male having sex with male. Hi, sir. Good morning. Sir, dun sa fireworks-related injuries, yes. malapit na yung January 1, so do we expect the number to grow or ano po yung, and ano po yung preparations natin to lessen the number of um, those injured from fireworks-related? Uh, the first thing that we did, we launched it last uh, December 19. Uh, and uh, we made use of the school children, elementary and high school, ta talking to them, telling them about uh, what they should be doing during Christmas and avoid uh, uh, firework, uh, firecrackers. Uh, we, did, uh, we did that launching with the PNP. Ando doon pa yung uh, mascot ni ni ano ni General Bato and uh, actually they have two mascots si PO1 Magalang uh, and um, General Bato and the mascot from Bureau of Fire Protection si B1 and B2 and our own mascot wala mer 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 mascot si Dr. Tayag <laughs> joke lang <laughs> eh yo si Kadiri naman yun eh but uh, <coughs> the strategy is to, to have these children tell their parents not to use, because I reported in that launching that one parent died because of firecrackers last year. Yung uh, Goodbye Philippines, lasing siya, inakap niya. And because of that, some children uh, lost their uh, fathers, lost their uh, father that time. So. I hope that somewhat uh, also help uh, strengthen the message that children should tell their parents not to uh, engage in this uh, dangerous uh, celebration of New Year. And also, um, the initial uh, 
proposal of have, having this ban on uh, firecrackers, just like what uh, is, was being done in Davao. So we have prepared that uh, executive order, but uh, it seems there are some uh, uh, adjustments that we need to do. Medyo late na daw yung implementation uh, kung isasagawa because there are already uh, industries that have prepared and uh, yun, malulugi din naman sila uh, completely. Kung, uh, so parang naglabi na baka pwedeng i-delay muna. Um, so but still we're, uh, we are advocating to the local governments na if they can set up community uh, fireworks display and uh, request or uh, appeal to the uh, community na wag mo nang mag papotok individually. So that's our proposal to ban individual firecracker use but uh, encourage or allow the community uh, fireworks display uh, to be implemented by all the local government units. So, yun po, patuloy yung ating panawagan and also we are making rounds of the hospitals uh, to show the people how prepared they are yung lagare, yung mga pamputol ng kamay, paa at dalire, uh, a way of parang scare tactics na rin um, so that uh, mag-isip-isip yung ating kababayan bago sila gumamit ng mga bawal at mga malalakas na paputok. Okay, MPC, sa iwas paputok na tayo. Wala na sa HIV, ha? Marlon? Ramos? Lang sa HIV. Yes. Uh, Yusek, how are you addressing the strong opposition of the Catholic Church regarding your plan to distribute condoms in schools? I mean, are you planning to sit down with them and discuss your plan? Uh, yes, that will be a good uh, strategy. But uh, our message nga is we are not doing this uh, just like that. It has to be coupled with proper information. The message is... Uh, we need to inform the youth about HIV because uh, the knowledge, the awareness of the youth is very low. It's less than 20% actually based on the several surveys that uh, we have done, 17% uh, to be exact, ang awareness ng uh, general young population on the uh, HIV AIDS. So it's very low. Uh, this way we can get their attention and uh, hopefully they'll uh, more more and more of our young population will uh, have this comprehensive, uh, more complete knowledge of HIV and how it's transmitted. So also, it's a way of um, uh, raising that, uh, putting it in the, in the air, the issue of teenage pregnancy. So because teenage pregnancy is rising, uh, it has doubled in the last 10 years. Uh, 2006, I think it was about 6 point something percent. Now it's 13 percent uh, during the 2013 uh, data. So teenage pregnancy is there. It's becoming a big problem. And premarital, premarital sex is happening. Mm -hmm. So and because of this, uh, also a lot of young uh, teenagers are getting HIV AIDS. So um, I hope the church will uh, understand that this we are not doing this to control the population uh, and uh, we are very much willing to seek their assistance and help uh, in promoting awareness about the morality of uh, our children uh, the proper way that children need to behave sexually and the the condom is just de there as a stopgap doesn't mean that if you, the teacher or you, the school gave you a condom, you have to use it. It's a sign of you getting the information, mm -hmm. you getting more responsible, mm -hmm. uh, and respect for your peers. Uh, yung mga kababaihan, lalo na, uh, dapat nire-respeto at hindi natin basta-basta sinisira din yung kinabukasan. Because if you get pregnant, then that's uh, one thing already. If you're a girl, especially, I know. Uh, are you hopeful that church leaders would listen to your? Uh, we uh, hope. We pray. We pray. Na <laughs> they will. So, uh, Yusek, is the DOH concerned about the 
decision of the PNP to uh, not to pursue yung uh, taping ng muscle ng mga baril nila every uh, New Year. Kasi yun ang directive ng PNP chief. Uh, will this, are you concerned that this would lead to uh, <coughs> the increase in cases of uh, stray uh, bullets? I, I, I cannot comment on that. It's the strategy of the APNP. But what I can say is so far as of this date, we have not received any report that there are injuries that are uh, due to stray bullets. Sir, did you see uh, uh, the president initially, um, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, the, DOH, the health secretary previously said that the president was set to sign an executive order uh, banning the use of uh, fireworks. Yeah. Uh, um, a draft of that was submitted uh, to the office of the president, but uh, the president said that this will have to be uh, discussed during uh, the cabinet meeting, and uh, I was not there during the meeting, but I, I just learned that there are some groups that are saying that we also need to look at the industry side, uh, the, the people that n will be affected in terms of their livelihood. So in Dabao, uh, it was implemented for so many years because uh, uh, the industry can have other market to, to go to. But when it's a nationwide ban, it's another thing. It's a different thing. Mm -hmm. And there will be industries and uh, laborers that may be affected by this move. So I think the president uh, was uh, wise enough to consider that even if he is a very strong uh, advocate of a total ban. So is an executive order enough? There's no need for uh, legislation for this? Uh, legislation will be a better tool uh, to really enforce uh, things uh, that we would like to happen. But for the meantime, uh, since legislation will take uh, much time, much longer time, we believe that uh, an executive order could have been uh, a faster way of uh, making our New Year's uh, safer for the Filipinos. Okay, thank you, Marlon. A is to be followed by Sweden. Last two questions na tayo, ha? Okay, uh, doctor. Uh, so, ibig sabihin, this New Year, there will be no EO on firecrackers? Uh, we have not seen any signed EO yet, so uh, uh, that's not for me to say. Uh, of course, mag-aabang na lang kami if uh, there will be an EO that will be coming out. Pero highly unlikely na. Pwede na bang sabi highly unlikely na kung siguro na ilang araw na lang. <laughs> hindi ko alam. <laughs> hindi ko masagot sure. siguro. Okay. Hindi ko na kasi akong pipirma eh. So. Mm, okay. So, pero what what are the details contained in the EO? Ano yung nakalagay dun sa EO na drain up? Can you give us more details about it? Yun lang. Uh, binaban actually yung individual use of the firecrackers. Uh, kasi based on our, ano, uh, what we have drafted, dalawang class yan. Firecrackers, ito yung mga paputok. And the fireworks display, ito yung pyrotechnics, ano? Ito yung pyrotechnics and the firecrackers. The fireworks is, uh, ito yung lahat-lahat. This includes the pyrotechnics and the firecrackers. What we would like to limit or to ban is the individual use of the firecrackers. Dahil ito yung uh, nakakagawa talaga ng injuries sa ating mga kababayan. But the, the fire, uh, fireworks display, yung pyrotechnics, uh, okay ito, um, especially if we set up a community fireworks display. So wala naman, no? bihira naman yung nakakaroon ng injuries because of that. We usually we see this in uh, mga fiesta, dun sa mga mall na malalaki, and uh, you don't see any report of uh, people getting injured. So, ang injury natin talaga during that, uh, the New Year is the use individually, individually of the firecrackers, especially the, the loud and the, uh, the big ones and the illegal ones. Piccolo, number one. Ito yung uh, pinakasanhi ngayon ng mga uh, related injuries natin sa firecrackers. May sanctions po ba nakalagay doon sa draft EO for violators? Pag EO, uh, what I know is walang sanction. Uh, wala. eh. uh -oh. okay. 
pagbatas diyan pwede ka nang maglagay ng saksyon pero pag executive order is uh, hindi ka uh, warning or uh, wala parang wala yata wala po. okay thank you po thank you Ace uh, Sweden Velado microphone good afternoon Yusek Sir, um, kanina po sa press conference ni PNP Chief Bato, nasabi niya that President Duterte told him that Philippines is not yet ready for a firecracker ban. Um, sir, do you agree with this uh, mindset of the President? Hindi pa po ba talaga tayo ready because of lack of information dissemination? Uh, I, I, I agree. Uh, of course, I have to... Uh, no. <laughs> I have to agree with the President. And uh, personally, I agree. Because... Uh, the, this administration came in midway, you know? and the preparation for the new, the production, ito, lahat, lahat ng mga, uh, even the investment happened even earlier. And just disrupting an industry like that, it will not be a good uh, sign also uh, in terms of your concern for your people. There are areas, there are industries that will be affected, and this has to be with uh, and uh, so far, so good. Sabi ko nga, we, have, we are seeing less, less injuries. Uh, kung hindi naman aangal yung mga uh, industry uh, ng fireworks na uh, hindi naman bumaba yung kanilang sale, uh, siguro mas naging maingat na lang yung mga tao. And um, we hope to have, to see that uh, continuing as uh, we celebrate the new year. Okay, last Sir, question. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. Follow up, Yusek. Um, so, just to clarify, we are pushing for a firecracker ban, not firecracker or e regulation. Ban po talaga by yes, next year, okay. if ever we implement it. Okay, okay last question. Celerina. Uh, good, good morning, sir. Sir, how big is this industry? Diba, you're saying na you're considering this industry kaya um, the government is not yet issuing this EO. So how big is this industry to be affected, if ever? Hindi ko alam, actually, uh, what I was telling earlier that it was discussed during the cabinet and what I heard is that there are lobby from the industry side uh, but I'm not uh, privy to the discussion that happened. So I really don't know how big uh, is the industry of the fireworks industry in the country. Since the government is avoiding this abrupt implementation, if ever, that's why there's no EO yet. So are we expecting that as early as next year, um, there could be an EO banning these fire trackers? Uh, two ways. It's either we uh, push through with an EO or we propose a law that will more or less uh, uh, achieve what we intend to achieve, meaning less injury, less, uh, less uh, damages, uh, kasi hindi lang naman injury minsan. Minsan nakakasunog pa, hindi ba? Because of the quitis na kung saan saan napunta. So these are the things that we would like to be achieved by this regulation that uh, we will be proposing. So we're expecting by next year uh, there will be an EO or a law prohibiting these firecrackers. Hopefully we can uh, have that by next year. Okay, thank you, Salarina. Thank you, Dr. Bayogo, presidential spokesperson. Morning. We'd like to uh, wrap up uh, the year with a brief summary of the achievements for 2016 and prospects for 2017. Um, as a very brief summary, we'd like to cover five areas, or six areas, that, uh, that have shown significant, uh, significant achievements under the Duterte administration. Number one is economic growth. Number two is uh, employment, aspect of employment. Number three is infrastructure. Number four is uh, international partnerships. And number international partnerships, the war in legal drugs, and peace talks. Regarding economic growth, the Philippines is one of the fastest growing economies in Asia in 2016. With a 7% GDP growth in the first three quarters, we are sure to achieve, it, if not surpass, our target of 6 to 7% growth for the whole of 2016. Um, household consumption, as well as investments in construction, public infrastructure, and durable equi equipment drove the economic growth. 
This was supported by low inflation, low interest rates, better labor market conditions, and the steady growth in the remittances of our overseas Filipino workers. Government assistance, such as the Pantawid Pamilyang Pilipino Program, or 4Ps, also provided additional boost to consumer demand. The agriculture sector is also starting to recover and finally breaking five consecutive quarters of decline. Growth in industry, particularly manufacturing, construction and utilities accelerated. The services sector likewise improved overall with stronger expansion in trade, finance, real estate, and public administration. So what are the prospects for 2017? The NEDA is setting a GDP growth rate in 2017 of between 6.5 and 7.5 percent. To accelerate poverty reduction, the fight for the full implementation of the Responsible Parenthood and Reproductive Health or the RPRH law. Um, this is intended to make sure that women become more productive members of the labor force. Employment. In 2016, the Philippine labor market is found to be in better shape, as employment rate as of October 2016 is at 95.3%. This means that there are approximately 41.7 million em Filipinos employed, while unemployment rate also declined to a record low of 4.7%. So what are the prospects <coughs> for 2017? Considering that one-third of our labor market remains vulnerable to external shocks, we must continue to work to improve local infrastructure and link the agriculture sector with industries to help raise the productivity of farmers and increase the value of their products. We also need to strengthen linkages with academe, technical education institutions, and industries to equip students with competencies essential to thrive in today's competitive work environment. In terms of infrastructure, in 2016, the NEDA board, which has already met twice, has so far approved 17 projects, of which we've touched on in several past uh, briefings. But among them, I just mentioned phase one of the Metro Manila flood management project, the EDSA bus rapid transit project, the Plaridel bypass road project, the new Cebu International Container Port project, the South Line of the North-South Railway Project, and the new Nine Filipino at Entertainment City. So what are the prospects for 2017? The government is ramping up public infrastructure spending a lot next year, allotting at least 5% of the GDP to go to infrastructure projects until 2022. International partnerships. What happened in 2016? The president embarked on foreign trips to ASEAN, China, Japan, and Peru. It is a very fruitful series of trips as the, invest, as the Philippines has now opened, opened more opportunities for trade and investment to a market of 1.8 billion people across the ASEAN region. This is in line with our desire for a closer integration in Asia through regional economic rebalancing and diversifying our foreign economic relations. What are the prospects for 2017? Our chairmanship of the ASEAN Summit next year will be a perfect opportunity for the Philippine government to forge more partnerships with our neighboring countries. The war on illegal drugs. The president launched a determined campaign versus illegal drugs, which are characterized as having reached the level of narco-politics because people in positions from local to the national, as well as institutions like the police and military, have been co-opted by the drug cartel. The campaign has resulted in the surrender of more than 900,000 people from the different barangays and the confiscation of billions of worth of illegal drugs. What are the prospects for 2017? Exposing the drug menace has now led the government to look at it not only as a national security threat, but also now as a public health issue. Hence the building of rehab programs all over the nation. Peace talks. The second round of the official peace talks between the government and the communist-led NDF ended with both parties agreeing on the framework and outline of the proposed agreements on socioeconomic reforms, political and constitutional reforms, and the end of facilities and disposition of forces. The negotiations, negotiations were conducted in Norway. 
prospects for 2017. President Duterte's ultimate dream is for all armed conflict to stop and for the Filipino people to live in peace, safety, and security. We'll have a room for a few questions. Questions? MPC? Ace? Tina. Oh, Tina Mendez. Hi, sir. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> May New Year's resolution daw po ba ang Pangulo? Like, hindi na magmumura. <laughs> I think he wants peace on earth, goodwill to all men. Hindi <laughs> ba? <laughs> sir, any reaction on the call of three United States senators expressing concern on President Duterte's war and describing at, uh, it as a campaign of ma this uh, drug campaign disguised as a campaign of mass atrocities. Um, is that an official statement? Is that from the State Department? Three senators, three, three U.S. senators uh, wrote uh, their <coughs> Congress regarding their campaign. It has not reached my desk, but however, they're entitled to their own opinions. Yes. Marlon Ramos? So the first six months of uh, the third administration and its uh, war on drugs, <coughs> how would you assess it, uh, considering that the president had uh, promised to um, stem the drug menace within the first six months of his administration? Yes, that was part of the campaign promise. Yes. Right? Uh, however, as he has said repeatedly, the, the, the depth and breadth and the extent of the <coughs> of the influence of illegal drugs is, is far more than he actually imagined. However, considering the fact that he was able to, that the, his campaign was able to yield uh, surrendering, uh, sur 900, at least um, nearly a million surrenderies, shows us how significant, uh, how, uh, how significant the impact is upon, the, upon the, those who are engaged in, the, in, the, in, the drug, in drugs. And uh, it's, I think it's something to be lauded something to be appreciated, and something I believe that uh, a great number of people on the ground appreciate. The fact that they can go home safe, the fact that there are no people are no longer uh, on, the, on the streets uh, acting with impunity. Um, and we hear this on the ground, as I sh I'm, I'm sure you do. Uh, people do appreciate the fact that, the, uh, that his war on drugs has actually yielded very significant results, both quantitatively and qualitatively. Sir, um, pardon me for saying this, but how can the government say that the, s the streets are now safer when the PNP said uh, the murder the murder cases had increased by 51%? I think you have to put it in context. Huh? The, it says also that index crime rates have also lowered significantly, telling us that a, number of those, a majority of those crime, uh, crimes have been related to drugs. So, uh, well, you know, so in a sense, it is a question of being able to see it with the right perspective. And also coming back from the reports, actually, if you hear anecdotal reports from people, they actually, s they actually say that, how much they deeply appreciate the fact that they can go home safer. Thank so you. it's better for uh, Filipinos being killed than Filipinos falling prey to um, um, petty criminals? Is, 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 is that the I think the, I think the way you phrase it seems to indicate indicate a particular political position. No, it's not that way. Uh, whoever, again, ag again and again, the president says that uh, nobody celebrates the fact that Filipinos die. No, and nobody celebrates that at all. Nobody appreciates that. However, we do uh, we do appreciate the fact that fr uh, that situation on the ground is so much more safer. That is what we celebrate. Sir, what are the uh, parameters when uh, the government says that uh, it is winning the war on drugs? Well, yeah. first and foremost, the fact that uh, we're, we're able to uncover the, uncover the depth and length and breadth of the, of the actual situation, the fact that he is able to identify, uh, identify at least uh, four to 5,000 uh, people in government and people in government who are actually involved in the, uh, in the drug trade in one way or another. That is already significant. Identifying the, identifying the enemy is about 50% of the battle, right? And also the fact that at least 900,000 people have already surrendered. When, when did they surrender? During his administration. So it tells you that uh, 
prior to him, prior to his situation, uh, this was not uh, so this was not something that was being done. And so uh, it's not a question of saying that this administration is better. It simply is the fact that it seems to be more effective along these lines than what has happened previously. Okay, yes, JP, sir. to be followed by Cedric. Hi, sir. Yes. Sir, may reports though na at least 100 people or street dwellers are being cleansed up, rounded up in the streets of Manila in preparation for Miss Yu. How true is it, sir? And are we eyeing this policy to be implemented to clean up the streets just to present something good for the visitors that will be coming here next year? In fact, on the contrary, what I heard, but this is only anecdotal, not policy, is the fact that the president apparently has said, no, leave them there. Leave them there so that the people see exactly where we are. So I don't know exactly which, which moves it is. I don't know if it's official. But as far as I know, anecdotally, the president has said that leave them there so that they, you know, we're, not, we're not hiding our true situation. Thank Sir, you. on another point, yes. the vice president last week said that she has raised concerns on the statements of the president about martial law. Mm -hmm. She has um, apprehensions to what the president said na changing the constitution. Can you please clarify this, sir? And yung concerns bang ni Reis nga, is this legitimate concerns? Um, or na misunderstood ba ni, ni VP yung statements sa presidente? Well, uh, you know, uh, the president, in context, the president was saying that, uh, uh, the, the president was sim saying that, uh, there seems to be, if, if martial law were to be taken for what it's supposed to be, which is to preserve the, which is to protect and preserve the safety of the people, then it should be facilitated. However, the presi uh, Vice President Lenny seems to have uh, amplified, amplified uh, her concerns and, uh, and seems to make it appear as if the President was actually planning on doing it. But if you read it in context, uh, it was not exact. It was not that way, sir. On another note, na lang on the vice president, pero sir, reportedly the VP is in New York, pero sinalanta daw yung Bicol. Ah, sinalanta yung Bicol. There are some criticisms on the vice president. Is this kind of wrong? Na the VP is taking a vacation, then her people is suffering. Oh. Uh, <laughs> That's not mine to judge. You know, this is not our position to be able to um, judge her actions. It's it's her responsibility. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Cedric. Sir, happy new year, po, sir. Yeah, happy new year, sir. Manila Times is reporting that U.S. ambassador, uh, former U.S. ambassador to the Philippines, uh, Goldberg, sir, left behind a strategic blueprint, now uh, supposedly on how to remove President Duterte from the office. Sir, uh, has the president uh, does the president uh, has the president seen? Uh, I don't know if you are seeing that, that not, but you know it's it's on the internet. <laughs> Everybody can access that. However, we have not received any news from uh, the State Department. Apparently, as far as I know, as far as I've, uh, I've been informed, the State Department has denied any um, any anything of this sort and has denied participation of anything of this sort. However, as we can all see, uh, you know, the, the president uh, continues to. Uh, uh, enjoy the trust of the people and uh, the pe people on the ground um, apparently appreciate what he's doing. So uh, again, let me just say that uh, at the, according to the article, uh, wh whoever attempts this will find it difficult. Okay. So last two. Okay. Uh, sir, on another matter, po, yung, uh, this I think this is the only uh, uh, aircraft carrier in China, sir, that conducting, uh, it has conducted the uh, route, uh, China says, uh, what it China calls a routine uh, exercises mm -hmm. sa South China Sea. Any reaction po from the palace? Po? Uh, we do not have, I don't, I don't have an official report. I don't have an uh, official reaction to that or response. Okay, Thank last you. question. Soliting. Sir, yes. can, can you confirm reports regarding the upcoming visit next year of Japanese Prime Minister Abe? When will that be? Would it be a state visit or official visit? Um, there have been talks regarding that matter, but there are no official word yet that has been given. So I cannot comment authoritatively. 
Okay. Sir, um, Secretary, another topic. Secretary yeah. Pinol raised concern regarding the four Ps because according to him, um, they received reports from the ground that um, there were um, less farm workers working now on the field because they, they were dependent on four Ps. Parang um, they're just waiting for the for the fund and place it like isusugal daw nila. So, um, is there any action from the government regarding this matter? We will have to clarify that with uh, Secretary Pinol. First, we have to uh, clarify the context of the statement, and then we have to clarify the veracity of whether it really is true that people are recklessly spending whatever aid that they're receiving. So if ever, will there be a move to like um, reduce the number of beneficiaries? Well, I'm sure there'll be, uh, there'll be resultant uh, responses. Thank you, Salarina. Thank you, Malacanang Press Corps. Thank you, Presidential Spokesperson Ernesto Abella. Back to our main studio sa Radio Lambayan at PTV4. All right.